All right, so you've heard about fossil fuels before. This includes coal, oil, and natural gas. And while those are really important to talk about and we will talk about them, what's also important is understanding how they're made. And the reason that matters is it's gonna help give us some insight as to how fossil fuels fit in the carbon cycle and subsequently kind of how humans are interacting with that carbon cycle. So let's talk about each of these fossil fuels independently. And we're gonna start with coal. So coal is a solid form of a fossil fuel. Now, a long time ago, when I'm saying long time, I'm talking about hundreds of millions of years ago. You know, Earth uh, did, didn't look too different than this. Like we had vegetation and insects and, and, and stuff like that. And specifically, when we're looking on land, a lot of land, not all land, but a lot of land was swampy. And if you've never been to a swamp before, this is not too bad of an illustration of it. You notice it's all like in this liquid, it's really dark, like the, the liquid itself is really dark. And the types of conditions that are in swamps is that liquid and that water is very acidic. And because it's acidic, there's not a lot of decomposers and microorganisms around. So what happens is that when this tree dies, when this fern dies, when any of this vegetation dies, typically in a regular environment, it dies, it falls to the ground, but there's lots of bacteria, lots of fungi around to kind of break it down and recycle all those nutrients back to the soil. But when you don't have those fungi and you don't have those decomposers around, then that fern, that tree, that vegetation dies, sits on the soil, and then nothing happens. It just stays there. And then you add another layer of vegetation and another layer and another layer and another layer. And so what happens is this dead vegetation on land, and I specify this because our other types of fossil fuels are formed differently. For coal, it's dead vegetation that's on land it dies, it doesn't decompose, and as it layers and layers and compacts and compacts, and you add a couple hundred million years, what you start seeing is this, you know, vegetation turning into peat, turning into lignite, and add enough heat, add enough pressure, and add enough time, you get coal. And you've seen peat before, you've heard of peat before. Peat is something that, like, you may have heard in the context of peat bogs, uh, really common um, in the United Kingdom, for example. Uh, so it's really cool if you look at peat, you actually can see that vegetation, but it's starting to get more dense and more compact. Now, the last thing I wanna show you with coal is kind of what the molecular structure looks like. And this is just a fragment of what it looks like. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is later we're gonna talk about kind of carbon dioxide emissions and whatnot related to the type of fossil fuel. And it's really important to understand what these fossil fuels are made of. Now remember, coal is just vegetation, just add a couple hundred million years to it. And so it makes sense, coal is very carbon-based. All of our fossil fuels are because it once came from living organisms. So it kind of makes sense. Now, if you've never taken chemistry, you are looking at this and you're like, I know that's a chemistry thing. Where's the carbon? And you could do see some carbons. So carbon, the periodic element, um, has the symbol as a C. And you might be like, wow, so there's one carbon in this whole thing. Well, if you've ever taken organic chemistry, or if you're going to take organic chemistry, that's where these hexagons become the bane of your existence. <laughs> um, I, it doesn't really matter if you memorize this or not, but each of these hexagons, if I were to actually draw out the chemicals or, or the elements that are in these hexagons, and obviously I haven't taken organic in a while because this looks bad, <laughs> every vertex of this hexagon is actually where a carbon is bound. So even though if you're looking at this and you're like, oh, there's only one carbon, no, every single one of these rings has six carbons. So coal is super, super carbon dense. And that's why we're able to get energy from it. You and I eat carbon-based foods and our body gets energy from it when we break those carbon molecules apart. 
Same thing with coal. You break apart those carbon molecules through burning it, you're going to get a lot of energy that we use to create electricity. All right, so that's coal. So let's go ahead. And, um, before I talk about the next fossil fuel, I want to show you this spectrum. And you might be like, okay, why am I looking at this man? This is Bog Man, B-O-G, Bog Man. And what you're looking at is a corpse from hundreds of years ago. And you might be like, why in the world are you showing this to me? Uh, this is actually really huge in the news. Uh, oh God, a while, decades, decade ago. And Bog Man uh, was this corpse that was found in a peat bog. And remember, peat is one of the first like steps of creating coal. And the reason I show this picture is look at how well preserved he is. You can see the whiskers um, on his face. You can make out all of his different wrinkles. Like this is a very well preserved organism. And that is how coal is made, right? Coal is just vegetation that dies and doesn't decompose. And so all those organic compounds in that vegetation stays in that vegetation. Now here's a more modern day example, not hundreds of millions of ago, just a hundred years ago, where this person was in a peat bog, circumstances kind of unknown, but there was rope around his neck, so you can go with whatever you want to imply with that. But uh, what we're seeing is that he didn't decompose. You know, after a hundred years, th this a person would not be in such good condition. But when you are in an acidic solution, and I don't want you thinking acid like, oh, why doesn't it bring them down? I mean, acidic enough that life can't really live in it. Bacteria can't live in it. Fungi can't live in it. So things just don't decompose. Uh, so using Bogman kind of as an example of what I mean by like decomposition doesn't happen. Okay, let's talk about our next uh, type of fossil fuel. So another type of fossil fuel we have is oil. And oil kind of works in a similar-ish uh, similar way to coal, but a little different. So just like coal, it really is the remnants of organisms from hundreds of millions of years ago. Except with oil, we're looking at aquatic plants as well as animals. They die, they kind of sink to the bottom of the ocean floor, or it could be river or a huge pond, like it doesn't necessarily have to be the ocean, falls down to the very, very bottom of the ocean, and then they're not decomposing. Uh, they're not breaking down all the way. And this isn't because it's crazy acidic down there like we see with coal. It's more of just that the further you get down in the ocean floor, like the less things exist. Uh, so you're getting all this different stuff kind of layering and layering. You can see those layers in here. As things layer, it's getting hotter. It's getting more compact. And eventually what happens, kind of similar to coal, is all of that carbon, all of that organicness um, is slowly being turned into this oil, this carbon-rich resource. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, if we look at the chemical formula for oil, there's actually a lot of different types of oils. These are just some examples of different chemical formulas. And let me draw a line here to make it a little more obvious. These are two different things, and there's a line between this. There's lots of different formulas. As you can notice, it's a lot smaller than coal. So the individual chemical itself is a smaller compound, is a smaller molecule than coal but it still has carbon in it, right? We see lots of carbons. So this particular one has eight carbons. This has four, this has six, seven, eight, nine. So it's not hundreds like we see with coal, uh, but it's still appreciable. And again, when we as humans kind of break these carbon bonds, that's how we're gonna get access to that energy. So again, oil is looking at the aquatic world at both plants and animals. Now, our last type of fossil fuel is natural gas. Natural gas is pretty much made identically to oil. 
it's still aquatic plants. It's still aquatic animals. They die. They fall to the bottom. They compress. They compress. They compress. You add heat. You add time. You add compaction. And bam, you've got oil. You add more heat and more time and more compaction. And it's natural gas. So natural gas actually starts as oil. Um, and then as oil gets hotter or it gets more compacted, then it starts I guess, transforming, so to speak, into natural gas. So usually natural gas and oil are found in the same exact spots. Uh, not always, but usually. And this also tells you, right, if you're finding oil and natural gas, what does that tell you about that area? So Texas, for example, in the United States, it has a lot of oil drilling. Well, that should tell you that once upon a time, there was water over where Texas currently is. So that's kind of cool um, to think about it. Oil and natural gas extraction gives you an idea of what the earth looked like long ago. Now, if we look at the molecular formula of natural gas, it's actually a very small molecule. And this is it, and there's not multiple types. Natural gas is also called, and I know the typing on here is gonna look bad, it's called methane. Methane and natural gas are uh, synonymous. When someone says natural gas, they are referring to methane and vice versa. There are other gases. Propane um, is a kind of common gas as well. But when you're getting natural gas, say in your home, if you're using natural gas for cooking or for heating, that gas is methane. And this is what the chemical formula of methane looks like. It is a single carbon and then these four hydrogens around it. So a much, much smaller molecule compared to our coal and our oil. All right, so that's kind of in a nutshell how these fossil fuels are made. Even though the different fossil fuels are relying on carbon from different sources, whether we're talking about land vegetation for coal or aquatic vegetation and animals for oil and natural gas, they both or all three rely on the same things compaction, heat, and time. These are all carbon-based compounds because they come from carbon-based organisms. And that's gonna really matter when we start talking about the combustion of these fuels.